Welcome back to Sandra's Homestead. Yes, we're still working on that beam. Um, Wayne has now uh, finished the dovetail pockets and the mortises that we talked about before. And, and now he's working on the uh, tenons and um, he has to make an unusual cut for them so that it, and I'll let him talk about what that does. But um, he, this is the last part before he goes ahead and finishes the beam. And after he cuts the tenons, he uses a couple of different types of sandpaper. He originally, uh, we tried to do a planer on each side, but we, in the beginning, decided not to buy the 12-inch planer, which was probably a mistake, but it cost like four times the amount of our 7-inch planer. So we decided to just go with a 7-inch, given our beams were 8 by 8 But what we found in using the planer to finish the sides it, there's a hump where you where you could tell where the seven inch ends and the one inch is left no matter what you do So we one day Wayne's like, you know, I'm gonna try sanding it and he uses a couple of different sandpapers a rough one first and then a uh, fine one and it um, He did this ahead of time on this side. I don't know if you can see actually else look at the other side where the Sun is um, well, I'm in the way but I don't know if you could see that. The top, this is not done. This is, this is not going to get sanded. Right. The top is, is not going to be seen, so it won't be sanded in, in the way of the sunlight. Here, I'll just turn it this way. So, yeah, would you? So this is it with, um, you could see this, this is all sanded with the rough um, and the fine 80 and 150 grit. Yep. And it looks so much better because when you're working with it it gets stains and fingerprints and all kinds of stuff you'll find when you do it but um yeah the sandpaper takes off less and we found um even though it might take a little longer than planing in the end of the end all the dust we have i mean we have a, a canister that collects collects dust but we um we think in the long run sanding is the best for that um and then the last step will be of course the oil and shelter institute uh, got us on to heritage oil for the inside of our house which is a natural finish and you'll see some in our garage that is natural color in the back there and then we added a product that they offer called mixol so it makes it a one-step process you just throw it in the oil and we chose this orangey color and that will be for our exterior timbers and it will fade out i'm sure a little bit but we like the color and that way you don't have to go ahead if you want to stain it later. So we just poured it in the oil. And at the end, when we wax anything that we cut, like, you know, the joints, and then you oil the outside of the timber, of course, so to prevent any um, additional checking, I guess, when it dries out, um, it'll dry out quick on the, in on the outside, which will cause uh, cracks. And it's gonna, we are told it's going to crack no matter what. And check, 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 thank you. It's going to check no matter what, so we'll just, it's wood, so that's what it does. But um, they said it can slow it down and prevent it from, you know, doing a lot more if we wax and wax what we cut and oil the outside. You wax so, the end grains, yep. Thank you, honey. So what are you doing here? Tell so us about your I'm tenon. I'm laying out for the wedged dovetail tenon. So this is the main beam that goes across and the wedge dovetail tenon goes into the post so um this down here is done this one on this end you want to see what it looks like all right here i come okay so this wedge right here goes into a mortise that also has a slant cut into it so it sits in there and then this shoulder sits on the shoulder of of the uh, of the mortise and then after it's in the post <clears throat> there'll be a space here an inch and a half space and then the big wedge gets driven in the back with a sledgehammer which brings everything tight and then you uh, you cut it off flush and that'll be the outside of the house right here um, and that's about the size of it and then you get I get to uh, two um, pegs pegs gets two pegs inch and eight pegs yes and you cut about 360 pegs total yeah three quarter ones and then i have three a, quarter a, then I have inch. A 
These ones get inch and an eighth ones, which are inch and an eighth. quite a few of those that need too. Yeah. So, and those are out of hardwood, and we chose red oak. If you, if you look up in there, you can see the post that it goes into. Um, uh, one of these. Okay. So this one right here, actually. Oh, okay. If you look over there, you can see how the, the, uh, Let me the come shoulder over. is wedged. And then the, can um, you point to it? Yeah, let me see. Here, you do this. So, see the the shoulder, that's where that wedge shoulder sits on. And then down in there, this is actually wedged. The mortise is wedged. Oh, it's a piece of garbage. So it sits in there at a wedge. The same way with those. All the outside posts get those because the beams go into the wedge and they call it a wedge dovetail. Thanks, honey. Yep. All right, so back to your tenon. Yep, so it's all laid out, ready to cut. So it's a two and a half inch tenon. So I cut it, cut it square and then I shape it after. All right, that's a two and a half inch tenon. He cuts it square and he shapes it after. Yeah, so. And can you tell us a little bit about how you're cutting it? All right. Because we, we normally would do it with a chisel, the whole thing, but again, we are in production a, mode. I have a 16 and a quarter inch skill saw. And here it is, it's called Sasquatch. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll set it on there like this, come around here to the end. Okay, watch out. Here I am. So I set it on here on the end where I can see the blade. And this is your depth setting. So you bring your blade up. Now you see my line on the timber? So you bring that up to you set the depth. Okay. Then you want to leave it a little high. So you have room to, to uh, fine tune it with a slick. And that's it. So you already got my slant cut here for the shoulder. So I'll leave a little bit there to slick it down the shoulder. I gotta put one more line on it that I forgot. And then he's gonna flip the timber over and do this, the same cutting on the other side with this 16 yeah. inch bandsaw. So what I'll do is I'll cut it a bunch of slits here like this. I'll cut a bunch of slots in it with the, with the skill saw. Mm -hmm. and, then I'll, and then I'll chisel all the chunks off. And then, I'll, and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Yep. So I have to lay out the tenon on this side. So this, this beam is eight inches wide, eight by 10. So this side's eight inches and the tenon's gonna be two and a half. And this is two and three quarter. So that adds up to two, two and three quarter, two and three quarters, five and a half. Plus two and a half is eight inches. So that gives me an exactly two and a half inch layout mark when I hold this flush. And he measures the beams first, the timbers first, yeah, just to make sure they're eight inches. Sure. Sometimes they can be an eighth out. Yep. You know. Okay. We'll go around the other side to see this.
Sometimes if you push it too hard, the breaker trips. come back a little bit later after he does the same oh you're gonna do that now yep we'll watch him uh, take out the material that he just cut Saves a lot of time that way. And that's your slick, honey? No, this is my uh, framing chisel. Now that's just an inch and a half. So normally I use my two inch. I have a slick that I usually use for that. Framing chisel I use when I gotta use my mallet. But you never want to use a mallet with your slick. So you just use the framing chisel for that. So depending on which way the grain is, sometimes you got to slick it this way or that way because you don't want to tear it out and it has to, you know, go with the grain. So. And how wide is your slick? Oh, it's two inches. It's slick. I only got a two inch one and it works fine for me. They make them a lot wider if you want a wider one. Would you... What's your preference? Do you, would you want a wider one, or do you think that be, for what we're building, you would use the this two inch? This one works fine. Yep. This one works great. So after I get done slicking the, and get cut the other side, the tenon. It'll get cut like this. So at an angle. At an angle from, you know, inch and seven sixteenths, no, like this. An inch and seven sixteenths over here. Um, I have it on the plan, I'll double check. So that way this- Like the other one at the other end so was slanted, yep. was angled. Mm -hmm. So it's wedged, yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right, well, we'll come back after you've um, completed this side and the next side and See what else you're going to do to complete this okay. tenon. Thanks everyone for watching Saunders Homestead and if you like what you see hit the like button and if you want to subscribe and see more we'd love that. Thanks so much for joining in. Bye.